وحدت در این کسرت شعاری است که همه جا میشنویم در مورد آفریقای جنوبی و البته با طلا و با نام الماس به عنوان لقب این کشور همه شما آشنا هستید الماس شاخصه های متعددی داره هم زیباست هم ارزشمند و هم بسیار سخت و فکر می کنم که تمامی این صفت ها برازنده یک کشور بزرگ آفریقای جنوبی داره که ما افتخار این رو داریم در خدمت سفیر محترم این کشور جناب آقای ویکا خمالو باشیم و به سخنرانیشون گوش بدیم جناب سفیر از شما دعوت میکنم تا به روی سن تشریف بیارد افتخار سفیر محترم کشور آفریقای جنوبی Thank you. Thank you. Let me also take this opportunity to congratulate the organizers of this event. It's, I think it's a wonderful event for us to participate in. My presentation is on the case of investment in South Africa. So the focus in the main is going to be the opportunities that uh, South Africa presents to prospective investors. It will also look into the possibilities of trade between our two countries. But firstly, I would like... Okay, this is where we want to start. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is where we want to start. This is the South African value proposition. We... What we're saying here is that South Africa is Africa's most industrialized, industrialized economy. And it is the region's principal manufacturing hub and a leading services destination. And this is clearly indicated in, in what we do and in the products that we produce. It is a highly diversified economic structure in terms of the sectoral composition, one of the most open economies in the world with a ratio of exports and imports to the GDP, which exceeds 58% and has preferential access to numerous global markets. I'll, talk, I'll come back to this. South Africa is also endowed with an abundance of natural resources. It has an extensive and modern infrastructure network. It also has a sophisticated banking sector with a major footprint in Africa. It is the continent's financial hub. South Africa also offers a supportive and growing ecosystem as a hub for innovation, technology, and information technology. Sectoral strengths of South African provinces. South Africa has nine provinces. They start with Northwest, Northern Cape, Western Cape, Gauteng, the Free State, Limpopo, Pumalanga, KwaZulu Natal, and the, East, the Eastern Cape, and the Eastern Cape. Now, all nine provinces have a variety of opportunities to offer, either in investment or in trade. And as indicated in the slide, it, we are showing the, the, the strengths of each province. I will come back to, to the stance of each province. I would like us to go to slide number three, which is the economic infrastructure geared to support production activity and investment, including export-oriented development. We have already indicated that South Africa has a highly developed economic infrastructure and the economic infrastructure we're talking about in, here are mainly the ports 
that you see from Richards Bay, Durban being the largest port in Africa, you have East London, you have Koha, Port Elizabeth, Cape Town, and Saldana. They are smaller ports in between these big ports that you see here. And this, and this ports, as indicated, are able to do mineral bulk, break bulk, agri bulk, roll on and roll out of, of containers, which are large containers or large ships, which allow to care, allow you to carry whatever you may have, other that, that rolls straight into the ship or, and some kind of infrastructure is created for, for the goods to move in the ship. Let's look at this in economic infrastructure, which is geared towards supporting production activity and investment and excluding export-oriented development. That's slide number four. We have, that this, this shows the different harbors, the, the different ports. It should, it should show you the different ports that, I've, that we have highlighted. In the slides, I have the port of Cape Town, which is renowned for the export of deciduous fruits, which include wine, perishables, and, fro and frozen products. We then have the port of Saldana, Africa's largest iron ore export port. And the Durban Container Terminal, which is Africa's busiest container terminal. East London, which is the motor vehicle components tech and textile, sugar, rice, timber, scrap metal, and, chemi and chemicals port. These ports carry a variety of products for export purposes. Some of these products come to, in the main, go to Europe, North America, South America, Asia, well, you can say in the Far East. Some go to Eastern Europe. And some of these trickle back, trickle to, to Iran, coming from these ports. They don't necessarily come directly to Iran in a majority of cases. The products end up in either in the UAE and then redirected to Iran. As you may well be aware that we have some challenges that Iran is facing at the moment. Durban, I would like to talk a bit about the Durban Container Terminal, which is Africa's busiest and busiest. Africa's biggest and busiest container terminal. It's, it carries most of the products that leaves for the majority of, 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 of the different continents. And is said to be a, the busiest terminal simply because it carries most of those things. And it receives quite a number of products coming from different parts of the world. We do not have a direct sh shipping, L shipping line between Iran and South Africa. So products that, that go to South Africa probably get there in a very long and convoluted, convoluted, convoluted way. But we do have Iranian products that end up in our shores. The fifth slide that I thought we should talk about is the platform to support growth. Uh, this looks at the preferential access to key world markets. It talks to South Africa being a member of the World Trade Organization, the w WTO, that it gives access to markets. Access to global markets has been enhanced through bilateral agreements with most of South Africa's major trading partners. Preferential access to export markets has been secured through various agreements and by participating in regional economic communities. 
on the left hand side you will see the, the agreements that we have there is the south african customs union which is the oldest customs union in the world formed in 1906 it is its members are south africa botswana lesotho namibia eswatini formerly known as swaziland there is also the southern southern african development community this community has a, is a free trade area is signed a free trade agreement with all 15 countries and there are 15 SADC members then we have the economic partnership agreements which are part of the free trade agreement these include play, uh, countries that are in saku the eu these are economic partnership agreements plus mozambique and angola then we have the efta which is efta and saku and the free trade agreement these include saku again iceland liechtenstein norway and switzerland then we also are a member of the african growth opportunity act agoa commonly known as agoa this is with the united states the african countries that have an agreement with the africans with the with the african countries that have an agreement with the usa this is a unilateral assistant assistance measures there are about 39 sub saharan countries that participate in this then we have the gsp which is the generalized system of preferences this is another unilateral non reciprocal which means a country decide to have a gsp without the other country affording the other country the gsp that's not that's why we say it's non reciprocal you make a decision whichever country decides to offer a, 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 a gsp the other country has no obligation to do so these include south africa the eu norway switzerland russia turkey the us canada and japan we also have an agreement with mercosur mercosur is the south american is a south american conglomeration of countries that focus on trade and other related matters this is a pre preferential trade agreement commonly known as a pda it involves saku in the area saku argentina brazil paraguay and uruguay and then there is the biggest of them all which is the africa continental free trade area which has become which became effective on the 1st of january in 2021 and aims to increase intra africa trade and create a very large market of over 1 billion people and a combined gdp of usd 2.2 trillion that will look into industrial development you may be asking yourselves what am i telling you this why am i highlighting all of these things these are opportunities that these agreements allow anybody who sets up trade either in south africa or any member of some of these countries or some of these organizations that either south africa or southern african countries are a member of it also allow free trade in a majority of cases to flow between and amongst a number of countries the last agreement that we that i talked to was the africa the, the african continental free trade agreement i think this is the most important free trade agreement that africa has ever had to sign between and amongst its own member states if you look at the majority of countries globally trade in europe let's start from there is done with most european countries the european countries trade between and amongst themselves and that's why they've done so well you look at asia it is the same thing south america it's the same thing it only has been lacking in africa africa does very little trade amongst its own member states 
the tendency for most African states is to trade with Europe, South America, Asia, and in a majority of cases, we trade in commodities. This becomes a problem in that these unbeneficiated products return to us beneficiated and cost more. I'll give you an example. If you dig iron ore and you send it to Japan or any other country, they beneficiate it, create steel, they then sell the steel back to you at a higher price. Or in the case of Iran, it would be marble. Case of South Africa is also marble and granite. We extract marble and granite, send it to other countries. In the case of Zimbabwe, it's gold and a host of other minerals. These minerals are not beneficiated in Africa. They are beneficiated elsewhere. What the continent is looking into is to create its own spots of excellence, of manufacturing, right? That will assist in the production of different products that African countries need so that we are able to trade amongst ourselves. This is the only liberator that we have. Liberating ourselves from dependency on any other country. On the European countries, especially dependency on the West, this will allow us to trade between and amongst ourselves and grow our economies. The other issues of governance and whatever else that needs to be in place will fall into line once the, our economies begin to pick up. This is what we believe in. So these agreements assist us, not only just South Africa, but they assist most, if not all African countries, to focus on what they are good at and to focus on what they produce and to see and to find other markets other than Western Europe or Western countries, to find markets in Africa, to find markets in the periphery of Africa, in, in the other continents. But in the main, most of the focus should be us trading with ourselves. So when I say trading with ourselves, it doesn't mean that we not trade with Iran. We will trade with Iran. We will trade with Iran on a number of, of products, on a number of goods. You have goods and services that may not be available in Africa at a given time. So those goods and services, we will get them from Iran or we get them from another third country. But the focus, the main focus for us as Africa is to make sure that we develop our own economies. We lessen the dependency that we find ourselves in right now. We may have been independent, politically independent, from the 1960s or those that were never colonized, but our economies remain in the main dependent on other economies. That's why I call this a liberator. It will liberate Africa. It will not just liberate South Africa. It will liberate all 55 countries of the continent. We have also developed what we call special economic zones. You have them in, in the Islamic Republic of Iran. We have these special economic zones. These special economic zones, like you have them here, provide a variety of incentives that make it easy for companies to do business. That's what they do. So we have them here to assist companies or to provide some ease of, of, of doing business in, in those zones. For instance, we have a preferential 15% corporate tax rate, value-added tax and customs duty, customs duty suspension, customs controlled areas, employment incentives. Employment incentives talk to the labor cost, that if you train workers 
we are able to reimburse you at a certain percentage the amount that you have used to train or to skill, upskill some of the workers that you, that you have. The designated zones, as you may have seen in the previous slide, include Saldana, Saldana Bay, which is in the Western Cape, the Dube Trade Port. The Dube Trade Port is an inland port close to the Shaga International Airport. We have also another one in Guha, in the Eastern Cape, in East London. East London is where you will find auto OEMs, where most of the auto OEMs are located in South Africa. The Mercedes Benz is, excuse me, of this world and others. We have a number of, we have a number of these that are manufactured and, 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 and assembled in South Africa, including the manufacturing of car components in some of these zones. In, in, uh, in Guazulu Natal, which is another one, is where you will find Toyota, for instance, being assembled or manufactured. And these cars are manufactured and then exported to other parts of the world through the, the global supply chain competitive process which means a company that manufactures in South Africa will compete to supply anywhere in the world with the other Toyota manufacturers. And if it wins that bid to supply country X, it then supply, supplies country X. So you find a lot of these Toyotas that we manufacture in various parts of the world. You'll find them in Europe. Some of them you'll even find in Japan itself. We supply back to Japan. Mercedes-Benz, we supply the three series, we supply the United States. The VW, we supply, which comes from Germany, we supply Australia and other countries. The BM BMWs, we even supply back to Germany and other countries. Through the bids, through these global bids that are conducted by the main manufacturer, which is Germany in this case, or, or Japan in the case of Toyota. But for BMW, Mercedes, it will be Germany. Mercedes has been manufactured or assembled in South Africa since the 1950s. So it's, this is something we've been doing for a very long time. Attractive opportunities across several sectors. I will not walk you through all of these, but I'll just pick and choose a few sectors that may be of interest to, to, to traders and to prospective investors. We have these sectors, agriculture and agro-processing. We also have mining, mining minerals and beneficiation. We have manufacturing. We have, we have also advanced manufacturing. We have the services sector and infrastructure. Under agriculture, for instance, we have fruits and vegetables, packaging and canning, right? We do, that's just what is amongst many. We have the processing of soya beans or soya based products. That's another. Under minerals and mining beneficiation, we have coal bird, methane, coal to liquid, coal ash utilization to address acid mine, drainage, and carbon capture storage. Well, when you look at coal, with cloud, there's COP26 that's coming up in Egypt. So with COP26, all of us have been asked to reduce emissions. I know the case of Iran and the case of South Africa, and the case of Brazil, and a number of other countries, especially the developing countries, who have argued that, look, we were not party to, 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 to the pollution, to the major pollution of the environment, or changing of the climate. Now you are asking us, when we're at this stage of our development, you are now asking us to reduce the emissions, and to stop producing some of the minerals, that are very important to us. So we will need assistance to be able to do that, to, to achieve that. Coal is one of them. 
South Africa is very much dependent on coal-powered power stations. Because we have an abundance of coal. So what do we do? We have embarked on a new system on, on which we call the mixed energy strategy. The mixed energy strategy involves quite a number of things that we're focusing on. We have nuclear. Nuclear, we have a nuclear plant. It's the only nuclear plant in, in Africa so far. So, but it, it produces about, not that much, it produces about nine to 12 megawatts of electricity for the country. We have hydro, which also produces a significant amount of power. But the major power comes from coal, which feeds most of our industries. We have also, we also have uh, wind and solar. We have gone into solar in a very big way through the triple, through the, the independent power producers. Independent power producers are different company, companies that come into South Africa and bid to build either a wind farm or a solar farm. Others do different things that are part of the renewable energy cluster. So that's part of what we do. We intend to increase, for instance, our nuclear production or the nuclear power. We, we intend to build, it's cheaper. Nuclear, if you do a cost benefit analysis, you will see that if you produce your electricity using nuclear, the cost is lower. The argument that is, why are we pushing for renewable? We think because like Germany is doing, you may hear quite a number of Western countries saying they are moving away from nuclear. But most of these countries in, in the West, especially in, in Europe, are dependent on Germany's nuclear. Or oh, it's France. France that feeds power, that sells power to some of these countries. So we intend ourselves to build more nuclear power stations and to retrofit the coal-powered fire stations into gas. So we'll, we'll start building more gas power stations that will assist us in the reduction of emissions. In advanced manufacture, in manufacturing, I've already spoken to motor, motor vehicles, parts and accessories, machinery equipment. We manufacture quite a lot of machinery, especially binding equipment. We are also into clothing and textiles. We manufacture also some cosmetics. I'm just highlighting a few. Advanced manufacturing includes fuel cells. You may well be aware that South Africa produces about 40% of its own petrol and diesel from coal, what we call coal to liquids, CTL. We also have another technology known as gas to liquids. Right, turning gas into liquids. In CTL, we use the coal to produce benzene or petrol and diesel, which goes into cars. This assists us to lessen our dependency in imports of, of, of petrol and diesel. But with the advancement of technology, we have had to change or are working through changing some of these refineries. I'm highlighting this for those businesses that may have an interest in, in such sectors. We also are into aerospace and electronics. We produce quite a number of uh, uh, defense, defense equipment. The defense equipment is sold globally. We compete and sell some of this defense equipment to various parts of the world. Same with electronics. Medical devices and imaging telemedical instrumentation. We do a bit of that. We, of late, we have gotten into additive manufacturing, including 3D printing. We've begun to produce some houses through 3D printing, which is a bonus. One of the most important sectors in South Africa is tourism. 
This is a sector that we've been discussing with Iran since last year to see how we can reignite this flame of tourism between our two countries. There's a huge potential between Iran and South Africa. The only problem that we face has been there are no direct flights. So I know one airline will, will announce in due course that they are launching a direct flight just before Norus or during Norus between South Africa and Iran. This is a huge achievement. We are very excited about what this Iranian airline is doing. This will increase not just the numbers of people that travel between our two countries, but it will also increase the people to people what we call people-to-people -people diplomacy, where we get to know each other better, where Iranians will meet ordinary South Africans and South Africans will meet ordinary Iranians in the streets, in their businesses, and in various areas. So that, that, is, that is happening. We also do what we call BPOs, business process outsourcing. BPOs are nothing but call centers. We have a wide variety of call centers that run, that are spread throughout the country, that service industries and other companies, be it in the United States, some are Indian, are Indian companies, others are German companies, the list goes on and on. I know Indian, India is the leading country when it comes to PBO, PBOs. But South Africa has also been working hard to increase this. We are also talking of the Internet of Things related opportunities. There are huge opportunities there, including analytics. You may not or, or may be aware that we have won quite a number of Academy Awards in the film production. We produce quite a number of films in South Africa. We are hopeful that with with our cultural diplomacy with Iran, we'll begin to show some of these films in this country with subtitles. And these are a wide variety. It's, uh, you know, some people like soapies and so forth. We have soapies that are being shown in the US, in the Barbados, and in some parts of the world. So we hope that we can increase this. Infrastructure. I've spoken to energy generation infrastructure and including renewables. There are huge opportunities here for any prospective investor who may want to be a part of that. But not only for an investor, but also for the supply of some of these parts that these companies will need in the renewable sector. Because not everything will come from South Africa. Some parts will come from China, some will come from Nigeria, other parts will come from Iran and so forth and so on. So you have to identify an opportunity, an industry that manufactures or that is in this space should then find this opportunity and use it, start trading. Transportation and logistics infrastructure. I didn't talk much to this. In the transportation and logistics inf infrastructure, we have the longest running line of railways or network of railways in Africa, in South Africa. We may be facing a number of difficulties in changing uh, some of this or improving some of these lines, but it still remains the largest network in, in, in the continent. So it's a matter of enhancing it, improving it, and making sure that it, it performs at its, map, at its optimum. Telecommunications. South Africa is one of the largest investors in, in Iran. We have MTN, which is a partner with Iran Cell. MTN is a South African company. There are a number of small companies that are doing various things in different, in, in, in different sectors in this country. So we, we are trying as much as we possibly can to improve not just only trade, but cooperation in the area of investment and other areas. It also includes services. We have, we have, we provide some evacuation services to, to mining and, 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 and other sectors with South African technology to some parts of Iran. Water infrastructure. 
We're a very dry country. We don't have a lot of water. So the focus, despite the rains that have been coming down like crazy in this past four weeks in South Africa, sweeping away homes and uh, and so forth, flooding our areas, flooding our cities. But And the dams, most of our dams are full, but they're full for now. We import a lot of water from Lesotho, especially for the Gauteng area, because that's our industrial hub. That's where most of the, of the water is utilized. We are discussing with Iran the issue of water desalination, because we want to desalinate seawater. Iran has this technology. So we hope, so we hope that we'll be able to do that. I can see my time is up. And then you have agrologistics and the rural infrastructure and recycling. These are some of the opportunities, not just in investment, but also in trade, right? I have highlighted in the main the investment opportunities in the health sector. We have a large number of pharmaceuticals and medicals. We in, other emerging opportunities are in vaccine manufacturing. You may have seen or read that South Africa has been launching the manufacturing of, of vaccines uh, with, with Pfizer, uh, 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 I think, and Moderna and, uh, and others. The manufacturing of swabs, valves and tube manufacturing, glove manufacturing, oxygen cylinders, and so forth. Oxygen and, and LN, LNG plus LPG cylinders. Iran is a leading LPG producer. We're talking to, to Iran. I know Nigeria is also talking to Iran. So these two giants of Africa want to maximize the opportunities that we see in Iran to kickstart some of those sectors in our countries. Another opportunity is in, in food and agribusiness. We spoke earlier about, about uh, agro-processing. There are quite a number of agro-processing opportunities that we have. And there's a lot of trade that we do in this sector. We have not gone into trading big time with Iran in, in this, but it's an opportunity that we are looking into. You will find South African agro-processed South African products in this country. But if you look, they are not, they don't say made in South Africa. But if you recognize the brand, those that have been to South Africa will recognize the brand, but it will have a name of the distributor from the UAE. So it doesn't come straight, but the products are here, some of them. We are also Focusing on digitalization, e-commerce is, has gone big. Not, there's not much I can say about that, except, except that it's begun to sweep. The, the purchases that were done in South Africa, for instance, by people going to shopping malls and paying over the counters and, and what have you at the, the registry is declining. A lot of people are buying now online. I see this with my own daughters. They buy, they tell me they want to buy groceries for the house. And I say, so are we going to be driving the car to the, to the, to the supermarket? And they say, no, daddy, we'll just do it online and the companies will deliver. So that's what is happening. It's not only that, it's a number, it's a wide variety of products. Those of you that are familiar with Alibaba will know what I'm talking about. It's a global company, but you have other companies, indigenous companies that have also come up. I've spoken to BPOs. I've spoken to innovation and technology. I will not take much of your time to this. There are about 10 reasons why you should invest in South Africa. You can, you can make this your bedtime reading. And remember when you look, when you see the word or the verb invest, or do not only think about invest, think about trade. Because that investment and trade are two bedfellows. 
once more, let me take this opportunity to say thank you so much for listening. I hope we can continue to do more business. Those that have not yet begun to do business, I'm hoping and praying that they'll find an opportunity in some of these. I will not apologize for having taken too much time. This is something that I do and something that I have to do. If I don't do it, who is going to do it? Thank you so much.